So this is going to be about why I specifically don't use Apple products. And I've known why for a long time, but it wasn't until it was so succinctly put into words by my friend Jake on Facebook that I really thought it was worth making a video on. So he recently switched from an S3 to an iPhone 5 because his S3 just got just beat beyond any type of repair. And I want to read what he had to say and also talk about my thoughts on it. My beloved Samsung Galaxy went to heaven today, and since I still have nine months left before I'm up for contract renewal, a friend gave me an almost new iPhone 5 to activate in the meantime. While the gesture of kindness was most appreciated, my first ten minutes of being an iPhone user make me feel like I've accidentally impregnated a woman whom I can't stand, and now I have to fake a smile for the camera posing with my new in-laws. I can't make this phone do anything. There is no back button. I can't figure out how to right click. Every time I hit this mysterious home button, some broad name Siri pops up and will not go away. None of my Google apps work anymore. The address book is arranged by last name, not first. And the ability to easily drag and drop files and actually view your directories is dust in the wind. Hello, Sync Library. I feel dirty, ashamed, and feel like I've turned my back on the streets. Please know I will be back with all my heart, Team Android. I just got to do a little bid first. 93% of all new cases of switching to iPhone go unreported each year, so I'm hoping coming forward will help someone else in the same boat. This is my story. This may seem a little overly dramatic and silly, but he's trying to make a point, and this is one of the ways in which he does it, and, I, and it did manage to make me laugh, and I want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, the, the fundamental problem that I have with Apple products in general is not even that they're badly made, because again, I will post in these videos and I will show you just how crappy some of this crap is, just how they have no ventilation in the bottom of professional computers that run boiling hot. I will show you how the display assembly is glued together on a $2,700 computer, like in 2008 and 9, so it just comes apart when the heat exhausts on it. Uh, there, I could go on all day on their hardware, but the thing that really, truly, fundamentally puts me off to Apple products for my personal use is that they take things that I already know how to do, they force me to do them their way, so that the people who already know how to do basic tasks now no longer ha know how to do them. And what pisses me off to no end is when I say yes to doing a task, or I say yes, I can use this to do a specific thing, because I just think I've been doing this for 5, 10, 15 years, it just should be easy and it becomes difficult because they decided that they're going to come up with their own way of doing it. And what drives me even more crazy is the fact that their way of doing it is something that the other 99% of the population finds simple, and I, I, for the life of me, just can't figure it out. And, you know, again, this, this, this goes back to about 2007. It was my first job at a recording studio, and at the beginning of it, it was an internship, and my job was pretty much to babysit this uh, vocal coaching class that they had at night and make sure they paid at the end of it and didn't destroy the studio. And what, one of the things that a lot of people would ask me is if they could have a, a file that was on their iPod taken off so that they could use one of the small recording rooms and to see what they sounded like over it or something like that, which would require me actually having the file. So one of them asked, can you take an MP3 off of this and load it in here? And I'm like, sure, it's an MP3 player, of course I can, even though I never used an iPod before. And I go to plug it into the computer let me tell you, it took me 45 minutes to find out and eventually give up on the idea that I'm going to take an MP3 that's on the iPod and take it off the iPod. Uh, there was syncing, there was syncing back and forth, which over USB 2 on the gateway that they had there, and with this kid's like 20 or 30 gigabyte iPod, that was not happening inside of the five minutes I needed to get this done. And in terms of, like again, just picking out a single song, no not happening. Uh, freeware applications that claim they have the ability to manage your iPod and pick specific songs off and put specific songs on from folders and view it like it's just a folder? No, not happening. There are freeware applications that worked but only work with an older version of the operating system or an older version of the iPod. That, that's the, always the way it works. Or they claim they do it but they want $50 or they claim they do it but they freeze and after 45 minutes I just gave up. And you may think I'm a moron. I'm a jackass, I'm a dumbass, I'm an idiot. And the thing is, even if that's true, I'm not going to get offended if you think that, but even if that is true, how is it that somebody who repairs these items at component level cannot figure out the basic task of taking an MP3 file off of the MP3 player and loading it back onto the computer when the primary uh, draw to these products is ease of use? Shouldn't somebody who can repair this product at component level at a, a literally a troubleshoot the motherboard of it to the point where I can say this is not turning on because of this component, should I not be able to take an MP3 file off of that iPod and copy it back onto the computer. 
I think that even if I'm a moron, even if I'm a jackass, that I should be able to figure that out. The same way I can figure it out with the RCA Lira that I bought at Kmart on sale for like $25. Because again, you plug an RCA Lira, you plug an iRiver, an iAudio, any of these other brands into a computer, it just shows up as a drive. You can put your music on there. You can put a little Word file with directions to your job interview on there. You know, before they had Google Maps. I know, I'm old. But you can put anything you want on there. You can put lyrics on. You can put, you don't, and you don't have to worry about sync libraries and all this other nonsense. But no, you've taken something that I already knew how to do. You've taken something that should have been very, very simple, and you've turned it into something difficult. And let's move on to the iPhone. This is like 2008, 2009. I was starting my business, and a decent amount of it was based on mail-ins. I would mail computers to customers. They would send them to me, and I would check tracking numbers of them. Now, do you think I want to remember or write down 1Z, U, F, O, A, P, whatever uh, tracking number? Do you think I just want to copy and paste it? I want to copy and paste it. So I get myself a BlackBerry phone because it makes it easier to email people back and forth. It makes it easier if somebody goes, hey, what's the tracking of this? They don't need to know that I don't have an office. They don't need to know that I'm broke and that I don't have a place with a receptionist to answer the phone and look it up in the database. They call, I say, please hold, and I scroll down and I find the tracking number and I copy it into my little Opera web browser on my Blackberry and I load it up and you know, 30 seconds later I can say it's scheduled for delivery tomorrow in Arizona. Right now it looks like it's going through, uh, you know, Tucson, whatever. And I can say, and the point is it makes me look and sound like a professional. So I decide I'm tired of how slow this thing is. I'm tired of the lack of features that I have on it. There are a lot of things that piss me off about the 8330 and the 9530 at the time. I wanted to get something a little better. So I look into the iPhone platform and I'm like, you know what? I can actually work with this. This is pretty usable. And I, and I, again, I didn't even think to check copying and pasting, but I just wanted to try it from an email and like I can't find this. So I asked the person who's let me borrow their phone, you know, am I missing something? Is there an option turned off? Am I being an idiot? And he's like, oh, you can't copy and paste on an iPhone. You can't copy and paste on a $600 smartphone? Are you kidding me? This is the leading device that everybody is going crazy about. This is a device that people are waiting outside of Apple stores for when they come out for days at a time camping outside to pay $600 for this crap. You can't copy and paste. Fuck this. And I said, you know what? After a while, my, iPhone, my phone was so slow, I would actually rather just get a post-it and write the fucking number down and then type it into the web browser or type it into the email when I wanted to. So I go to the store ready to get an iPhone, and I think, you know, this is going to suck, but it's better than what I have. And I look into it, and I'm like, I think I, this is going to be fine. You know, I have Verizon. I have good service. All I got to do is get a little, you know, a little post-it to write, these, write small things down, and I'm set. Go to the store. They don't make an iPhone on Verizon. I'm like, well... Can I get one unlocked? No, they don't make one. Can I buy from another country? No. You use AT&T. Can I use anybody but AT&T? No. You use AT&T. Fuck you. I'm in New York. I'm in Manhattan. I don't want to use AT&T. I need the ability to actually receive and make phone calls. That is not something you do on AT&T in 2008 and 2009. In 2008 and 2009, AT&T solely existed to take $150 a month from every iPhone user and provide them with something that's worse than what you would get with a broken 50-year-old CB radio whose batteries are running out. You don't do shit on AT&T, let me tell you that. Uh, it's very, very different than what it is now. AT&T is a usable network now. It was not usable in any way, shape, or form if you were an iPhone user five years ago. Just ask the people who had them. They remember. And again, you are pretty much telling me that I can only do this your way. I cannot copy and paste. I must use post-its. I cannot copy files back from here. I have to wait for the whole fucking thing to sync to a new computer. I can't use a provider that actually works. And I'm like, you know, at this point, I'm, I just said, fuck this shit. I am done with Apple crap in general. I will fix their stuff. I will happily fix their stuff. I will support their users. But there is no way in hell you're getting me to use any of this stuff. Because it's just, it's a pain in the ass. At the end of every single time I tried to accomplish something with an Apple product, I realized that it either could not do what I wanted to do, or they made it convoluted and miserable to do what I wanted to do, and wanted to charge me a 20 to 40% fee over what anybody else charged for the same hardware to do it. 
And a big thing about Apple products is, again, it's this walled, it's this, it, it's this garden, it's this ecosystem. When you enter it, when you have an iPad that syncs with your iPhone, your iPod, and your MacBook, and everything just works beautifully inside the ecosystem. Everything works nicely. The software works. The, everything is there the, to create content, to create. It's just supposed to be so nice and so easy and so beautiful. And I just, it, it works for a lot of people, but when you actually know how to do this stuff, when you have systems in place that are basic, that are simple, that make sense, and you try to use an Apple product to do some of these basic things, I just find that they just, they just go out of their way to make it more and more miserable. And I'm not really a fanboy. I love Lenovo products. I love Lenovo laptops. I think they're great. I think they're durable. But there are a lot of times when people will come in with them and they'll get you know a new virus every week, and I'll say just just buy a Mac, or they'll come in to use it for audio production, and they'll come in to use it with a specific piece of hardware that I know has much better drivers for Mac, or they'll come in to use it for software where I know that that software works much better on a Mac, and I'll tell them you should buy a MacBook Pro, get a Retina, get a Tower, get an Air, it'll do better for you. I'm not a fanboy. I'll recommend Apple products to other people when I feel they will work best for them, but for me. They just make my life miserable when they're supposed to be making my life easier. Again, the right tool for me is not the one that says Lenovo. It's not the one that says Samsung. It's not the one that says BlackBerry. The right tool for me is the tool that makes my life easier, the tool that makes my job easier. And every time I go to sit down and use an Apple product, I find that it makes my life more difficult. Have a lot of these things changed? Yes, they allow copy, paste, and select on an iPhone. You can use an iPhone on almost every carrier. I don't care because I've already been won over by products that cost 20 to 40 percent as much money that do the exact same thing that don't make my life more difficult. Am I open to going back to an Apple product someday if they make a product that does amazing things that doesn't make my life difficult? Absolutely, because I'm about using the tool that works best for me. But am I going to use these tools right now? No, I have no compelling reason to. Again, it's, it's like 2014, and you guys are just now realizing that you need to have ventilation holes on the bottom of a high-performance thin laptop. Like, I have no reason to, to switch. Again, like, this, this stuff is just silly. I mean, other companies have known this for 10 to 15 years, the stuff that Apple is now just figuring out. I mean, like, it was just not even until a couple of years ago that you realized that people hold a phone like this, and they still expect to get service. And, again, that's the, and uh, you know, going into uh, the, the arrogant thing is, and the cocky things that Apple tells their users, this is not how you use a phone. You're not supposed to use the laptop that we advertise as this awesome at Final Cut Pro for video production. Just the silly crap that I hear coming out is just, 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 just no, don't, don't, even, don't get me involved in that. But yeah, that's why I don't use them and that's why I'm not a big particular fan of them for my own personal use. Again, if it works for you, that's great. I'm not one of those jackasses that says everybody who uses Apple products are idiots. Everybody who uses them is brainwashed by Apple. Blah. Again, all the people who make comments like that, either pro-Apple or against Apple, are fanboys. And fanboys are something that you need to avoid, that you should never wind up being, because fanboys don't use their brain. They stick to one ideology, and they just, they just turn off their brain. And they only listen, they only repost facts that support their ideology and their belief. Don't listen to fanboys. And, you know, I think it was Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was him who was quoted as saying something like, uh, you know, the uh, beauty of the iPad is that it doesn't come with a manual, but everybody knows how to use it. And that's one of the greatest, most well-touted features of Apple products is that uh, the whole point behind it, the whole point behind it when you, you, you listen to these Steve Jobs interviews from the 80s and 90s was that it was supposed to be a computer for people who just wanted to do things with their computer without actually having to know and be an expert on how to use a computer. And in that, in that right, I believe they succeeded. But, you know, it, I do... It's my personal opinion that this backfires with people who are already advanced computer users because you wind up taking these tasks that should be very, very simple things and they're just, they're just not present. It's not an option. It's you have to do it our way. You have to not copy and paste. You have to use the carrier that we tell you to use. You have to copy files from your MP3 player to your computer the way we tell you. And it's just, it's just not something that I'm really that interested in.